The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Kara Oosterhouse here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Tom Wolf of Agrometrics and Sprayers 101. We are, at that time of the year, we are busy crazy in spraying season, and lots of producers are spraying their fungicides now. And there's a couple things you're going to want to keep in mind. Tom, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so fungicide spraying is so different from herbicide spraying. When we spray herbicides, we're really talking about a short canopy. We're talking about wheat that might be an inch high at most. And so it, it really is just a single plane. And as long as you get it to that plane, that level on, on the ground, you're going to have hit your target. You won't have canopy closure. Uh, the main thing to think about there is, of course, mode of action, uh, droplet size, water volume interactions, just for targeting a specific weed. For fungicides, we're now talking about a taller canopy, a ta- canopy that's probably closed in, and a canopy that's a little bit, you know, diverse in its structure. So the top, the top half might look completely different from the bottom half. What we really have to understand is how the fungicide and the disease work together. You know, what, what disease are we after? Where does that disease develop? Uh, and where does the fungicide have to go with respect to targeting that disease? So most fungicides are not translocated very well. So we actually have to spray the fungicide or the spray has to land where the disease is to protect the, or where the leaf is that needs to be protected from the disease. And so that, that could be a bit of a different challenge. Okay, so when we're looking at tackling this challenge, one of the things we're going to be looking at is water volumes. How does your water volume in your tank mix play into all of this? Yeah, so water is actually the most powerful tool we have for manipulating where the spray goes in the canopy. Yes, there's also droplet size. We will cover that a little bit. But it's water volume that really increases your ability to go deeper into the canopy. So uh, in, in terms of a, you know, a, a cereal canopy, the, the, the wheat... Uh, has three or so different rough layers. The top layer uh, for, you know, Fusarium head blight timing, the, the emerged head, relatively easy target. It's out in the open, so there's really not a lot of interfering elements, and you don't have to have a lot of water just to hit the head. But you, what you might need is, is a directed spray to hit the head from the side so actually you get better coverage because, again, it doesn't translocate well within the head, front side and possibly back side. That's where the twin nozzles really come in. But if you go deeper in the, in the, in the wheat canopy and you want to do maybe a T2 timing where you have Fusarium, tan spot, the kinds of pathogens that come up from the, from the re- crop residue that come up from the bottom, you have to go deeper into that canopy with a spray. And the only real way to do that is to add more water. If we double the water volume, for example, all things, other things remaining equal, you actually double the droplet density at any given level. And that's really the currency of fungicide performance is droplet density. Uh, Because you have to have that coverage. You have to have so many drops per square centimeter to make sure that leaf is actually protected. And how do you actually determine how much water is going to make the spray go where you want it to? It's just sort of a, I mean, it is a bit of a guessing game, but you again, you 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 do, uh, what I often recommend is you look down and you kind of tell, ask yourself the question, what part of the plant canopy do I have to target based on the disease and the mode of action? And uh, can I see that plant part? If you can see it, then probably a a relatively modest volume of spray will probably hit it because there's nothing in between the spray and that target. But if you can't see it, that's now where water volume and possibly droplet size come into play. The larger drops are typically intercepted by the first thing that they encounter. So if there's a leaf here and you have to be here, the water's going to, the big drop's going to hit here and it's the end of the game. But a small drop might be able to go around that and cascade down to another level in the canopy. And that's where the finer droplets are really, really important. Now with fungicides, there is no doubt about it. You are spraying in the middle of the summer season. How, how does heat play into it? Obviously, you know, it's product specific, but what sort of considerations are you going to want to have when it comes to temperature and spraying your fungicides? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, with fungicides, just like with herbicides, they do have to be taken up by the, by the plant. So there has to be uptake through the cuticle. And that uptake is much more efficient when the droplet is wet. And so uh, a relatively longer life expectancy of the droplet is, is absolutely crucial. That's why hot, dry conditions are really bad 
times for spraying almost anything, including fungicides. So I would say look at the Delta T again. That's the temperature between the, the dry bulb and the wet bulb. It's really a different way of measuring humidity. But the larger the Delta T value, the more the faster the, the water will evaporate. A Delta T of 8 or greater is usually not recommended for, for any kind of spraying. The best way to, to sort of ensure yourself against fast evaporation is to use a larger drop. Coarser sprays are re really valuable and appropriate, even for fungicides. Remember, we have that larger water volume, so we can afford to have a little bit of a, a coarser drop. In all of our research with fungicides, be it in pulse crops or cereal crops or oilseed crops, droplet size has never been the major factor determining outcome. It's always been water volume. So I think that uh, kind of gives us license to go to a little bit of a bigger drop to protect ourselves from those adverse heat conditions. Okay, so we've touched on the amount of water you need when it comes to fungicides, but another question that a lot of producers have is aerial sprayers. They often need less water. Why is that? Do you have any comments there? Yeah, so most of our fungicide labels might say 10 to 15 gallons per acre, whereas a, a, an aerial label might say four, you know? And so the question is, how, how come we have to use so much water and they don't? So it's really a question of practicality. I mean, we know that aircraft have smaller hoppers, have larger fairing distances. Those are all practical limitations on how much they can actually put down. The price that they pay for putting the, the smaller volumes down is finer droplets. They really have to put finer droplets down to get the same coverage, and they can absolutely do it. But that means they're more time limited. So they can't spray on the windier days or the hotter days for those obvious reasons. And uh, you really uh, want to just be aware of that. But I think that w whenever possible, even aircraft will use more water if they can. Just that maybe the logistics prevent them from doing it.